night in a minute. I even told the guys last night in prayer, you know, that uh, I was going to go someplace with, uh, you know, setting up the tabernacle and, and all of this kind of stuff. And But, you know, even after leaving, I'm like, Lord, you know, that's not it. And it, I mean, if I just tell you something that's not in season, it isn't, what good is it? Right? We need an in-season word. So when I got here, I got up early this morning. It was like 5.30. I said, I got to go to the church because I need to hear from the Lord. I need a message. Father, you need to tell me what it is that you want me to speak. And, um, and when I got here, you know, I'd sat down and Jason came here uh, a little bit after and started talking and, um, and then the Lord started moving. And, but it really, I've been looking because the Lord has been showing me a lot with with the eyes, right? And I'm like, you know, Lord, what's going on? You know, even my wife just asked me. When I got home last night, it was about 10.30 after, you know, church and stuff, or 10 o'clock, whatever it was. You know, she said, I did everything in there, but what I need you to do is just go in there and put the, the eyes of the bears in. You know, and she just has to, she has to have surgery on her eyes. Then I went and seen a friend of mine, Al, and he was talking about how he had, you know, he needs to have eye surgery and he had it yesterday. And then I was talking to somebody else about the eyes. And, um, you know, so when I got here this morning, I'm like, Lord, what is going on? What are you trying to say and what are you trying to show me, you know, with the eyes? And I tell you what, man, if you don't dig, you're not going to find it. If you don't press in, you know, and begin to follow the trail that the Lord is leading, well, then you're going to miss it. So, uh, you know, all the struggles that you see going on right now and all the struggles that you're going through right now, you'll realize if you have an understanding of where you're at right now, where the children of Israel was at right now, this was a day that they actually, today, the children of Israel, you know, 1,500 years ago, actually going back 3,500 years ago, they, you know, the tabernacle was erected. It was all packed up and God said, go. And they left Mount Sinai, headed to Kadesh Barnea. And it wasn't long that they was in it. It was today they packed up and left. It was a transitioning time that, you know, God said, look, I'm taking you to a holy place. You know, and so I began to, all right, Lord, I want to see where you're at and what you're doing and where you're going. So I go back to his word to see what's happening. To find out where were the disciples at right now. They were struggling. They was in hiding. Right? But Jesus was revealing himself to them. Yeah. So they was going through a lot. I bet everybody in here is going through something. I guarantee it. Everybody's struggling. Nick came here. I mean, he's outside. I had to go talk to him outside. He's crying and broke down and just, you know. And I'm like, brother, look, everybody is going through something right now. Yeah. We're all going through it. But you know what? We've got to remain. That's right. And we've got to stay faithful no matter what we see with the natural eyes. That's right. And that's what I want to talk to you about right now, today. About what we see with the natural eyes. Because with the natural eyes, if we look through the natural eyes, and we continue to look through the natural eyes, man, we're going to miss it. That's right. It's got to be through the eyes of the Spirit. Amen. So you can see how God sees. Amen. Right? So anyway, um, kids, you guys are dismissed. And uh, it's good to see y'all. I'm glad you guys are here. Yes, ma'am. There's one thing we have to remember is that we, we ask God for things in our economy. Right. But we have to remember. It's not our time and that means anything. Because it may seem like he's not with us, but he's always on time. That's exactly he's right. Always. Boy, you write about that. He's always on time. And we have to keep our faith in what he's doing, not what our time it says to do. Wow. Because he's the one that's always on time. Us, we can be way off in Timbuktu. Boy, you're right about that. Anyway, you're right. we have to remember, he is always on time. Right. You are right. You are so right. And let me tell you something about that. Um, 
I'll give you, uh, last night I, I gave a, a testimony about just God's provision. Um, you know, because we're all walking in, in a faith walk right now. Some kind of way, shape, or form. I don't care if it's, you know, if it's just you're battling in your flesh or in your spirit or, you know, your, it's finances. What's that? No idea what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> Carl said he has no idea. And let me tell you something. The pressure is on. And look, anybody can walk with the Lord when we're on top of the mountains, right? But there's no growth up there. It's bald. It's like here, up here at the top. You know, it's getting thin up there. All the growth is down in the valley. And you're going to be tested. And you've got to go through the valleys to get on top of the mountains. And it takes time. It takes, you know, and, uh, and the enemy will do everything he can to stop you from being where it is that God has called you to be today. You know, last night I didn't want to come and pray. And I told him last night, even the pastor didn't even want to come and pray. Right? But you know what? I know if we're faithful every Friday, we're going to break through. And God's going to do some big things right now. Right? I tell you what, though, it started off rough, right? And turned out good. And that's exactly what happened this morning. Here it is, struggling, trying to get through to worship. Things just not working out, you know, and it's when the enemy, you find out that when the enemy is trying to do everything he can to stop it and cause distractions is when God really moves in a big way. I've learned it in prison, you know, just battling and struggling to go minister and then, you know, once you get dressed and you're finally there and you're with the guys and the Spirit of the Lord starts moving, you're like, man, I'm so glad I came. You guys are in for a treat, believe me. I did get a word from the Lord, and, uh, which is a good thing. And I'm going to tell you how it came. I got here this morning, and um, I had told y'all last week I'd probably be going into the story of Joseph, right? And um, so the other group uh, in which Marcus leads up in uh, Baton Rouge, um, my brother's been talking to him for the past couple of weeks and just sharing, you know, all the, man, the, just the revelation that's in there, you know, and just, you know, and he wrote this, you know, he types it all up and he's very good at what he does. He's a state trooper, so you know he writes reports, so what he does is going to be very well. And here it is. I'm reading my own notes that he wrote down and I'm getting excited. <laughs> and I called him up on the phone and thanked him. I'm like, man, I, man, wow, I'm going to let you do all the writings, you know, and stuff like that. But you know what? As I begin to read it, you know, um, and coming through it, it got me back in the direction that God wanted me to go. Amen. So I opened my word up, right? And I started, I went back to Joseph. In, uh, in Genesis 37 and I started reading and the very word that the Lord had spoke you know to me about or he was trying to show me about the eyes about the eyes man is how he reveals it so we're going to get into the story of Joseph just a little bit and I'm going to take you down a path and um, because you know the revelation and all of that's good but man, sometimes we just need to be touched and healed, man. Really. Um, it's real deal up here. It ain't no, you know, ain't no fake up here. I remember, you know, you know, a certain pastor had told me, don't let your congregation know if you're going through something. Well, it ain't going to happen here. Right? It's real deal. I'm real. When I struggle, you're going to know it. And if you're struggling, don't hide it. Because if you hide it, what good is it? But, you know, in this church, in this body that we have, I had people just, people always coming up and praying. I think you guys pray more for your pastor than anybody else. I really do. And it seems like every week I'm struggling. I don't know what the deal is. I'm sure supposed to be encouraging you guys. And here it is, y'all coming and laying hands on me. And, um, but I'm going to tell you, when you're really seeking what it is that the Lord wants and where He wants you to go, and it's not, you know, about me coming up here and trying to give you just a good message to tickle your ear. When we really need to hear a word from the Lord. Lord, what are you saying right now? What are you doing? Man, you need God to speak it. You need God to tell you and show you. And I'm like, Lord, here it is. I'm in, you know, 
I'm the pastor of the church. I don't have a word. I need a word for them. I need to know what it is that, and not only for them, but for me as well. So the word encourage, usually the word always deals with me first and encourages me. And then it just kind of rolls off onto you guys. But you guys ready? We're going to get into something. We're going to go into Genesis chapter 37. And it's actually, I'm going to start off in the story of Joseph. And, uh, and I'm going to connect a few dots for you guys as we go. Some of it you're going to know already. But where I'm going to take you in it is going to be really good. Y'all ready? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you, Father, for just getting me here this morning. Thank you, Father, for bringing Nick. Lord, thank you, Father, for bringing uh, those that are here, Father, today to hear from you. Lord, thank you for those that we know that others had things to do. And um, on Saturdays, it's hard because of birthday parties and stuff like that, Lord. And, and um, Lord, I just ask that you be with them. And whether they're catching it here live or on Facebook or YouTube or whatever it is, Father, just ask. Lord, that your word would just touch them and bless them and encourage them, Father. Because right now, Lord, as you was encouraging your disciples, revealing yourself to them, Father, you was uh, showing yourself. They was able to see you. Lord, that's what we want. We want to see you today. Because just seeing you, Father, brings strength and life, Lord, and uh, in our times of struggle, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, let's get into it. Um, so, this message, I didn't have time to, you know, usually at home I can write it all down and stuff like that. When I got here, the Lord started speaking, so I jotted some notes down, and we're going to uh, see what the Lord does, right? So, let's go. I'm going to start in uh, Genesis chapter 37, and... Um, we're going to get into it. And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his fa where his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph being 17 years old. You know, that was, uh, 17 is very significant. Aunt Goldie had just told me, you know, uh, about 17, right? And I told her that 17 is resurrection. And at that time, God had raised her up. So there's things in here that God speaks to us. Christ was raised up on the 17th day. And you know, Joseph was raised up out of the pit when he was 17 years old. Noah's ark was raised up in the second month, the 17th day. So today, God wants to raise you up. He wants to lift you up if you've been going through something, you've been falling. You know, it's time to... Uh, in fact, today is the very day that they raised up the tabernacle and packed it all up and went, right? So God wants to do something. He says, um, these are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad uh, was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah. Now, Bilhah and Zilpah, they were actually Egyptian, right? So this ain't Rachel and Leah. This is their handmaidens that Joseph is working with, right? And the four that he's with is Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Watch. And that gets into some stuff, which is amazing. He says, um, And he was with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all the children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. Now that coat is skins. Many colors. A coat of many colors or skins. Red and yellow, black and white. Remember, Joseph was a picture of Christ. You guys know it, right? Remember, they stripped him of his garment. They stripped Christ of his flesh. He died for the red, yellow, black and white. Right? Everybody. This is, remember, Joseph is a picture of Christ. And watch what happens. He says, Now Israel loved uh, Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. God is called the Ancient of Days, right? And he made him a coat of many colors. That coat or skin is what God had prepared for his son Jesus. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. 
Now this is the Father sending His well-beloved Son. And the Pharisees and Sadducees despised Jesus. Right? And Joseph dreamed the dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made abstinence unto my sheaf. This is just a picture of Christ being raised up in the twelve tribes. You know, the eleven tribes all bowing down, making abstinence unto the line of the tribe of Judah, which is Christ. It's all a picture of Christ. And his brethren said unto him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us? Or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed the dream more, and behold, the sun and the moon... And the eleven stars all made abstinence to me. And he told it to his father. And this is just a confirmation again. Letting everything be established by two witnesses, right? First the sheaves, now the stars, right? He says, um, And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and, and thy mother... And thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves unto thee to the earth. And you know how it comes to pass later on in the story with Joseph. And his brethren envied him because his father observed his sayings. His father took notice to what he said. So he didn't just shrug him off, right? And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. This is a very interesting place. Shechem. Right? Shechem means, last night, Shechem means burden or between the shoulders. Now let me fill this in for you. You ready? Now, Joseph is sent to Shechem to go check on his brethren where they're feeding the flocks. Shechem is two mountains, right? And on either side of the mountain, in Deuteronomy chapter 27, God put six tribes on this mountain and six tribes on this mountain and, and pronounced blessings and curses. And what was in the middle in the valley was the Ark of the Covenant. Shechem means shoulder or burden. This is Christ, the Ark in the middle, Bearing the cross, the burden. That's what, you know, that's what this picture is. This is where Joseph goes to. A very important place. This is where Samaria is. This is where Jesus goes unto Samaria and talks to the woman at the well. And we're going to get into that. Pretty amazing. And he says, And Israel said to Joseph, Wait, and his brethren went to feed their flock, uh, their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto uh, him, Here I am. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out uh, of the valley of uh, Hebron, which means alliance, and he came to Shechem, which means shoulder. And a certain man found him. Ah. Sound familiar? You know the parable of the Good Samaritan and a certain man? This is the same place. This is Shechem. This is Samaria. Watch this. And a certain man found him. And behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? He's looking for something. This certain man is actually Christ, pre-incarnate, that found Joseph. They're both a picture of Christ. He's looking for his brethren, right? Same thing. And now Christ tells him, or, you know, or Jesus tells him, he doesn't realize it's God in the flesh. He says, um... And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the man said, They are departed hence. And I heard, him, and I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan, which means the place of wells. Now, this is the very same place where Christ 
speaks to the woman at the well. Right? This is the very same place where Joseph is cast in the well. Right? The empty well. <clears throat> this is the very same place where they conspired to kill him. They conspired to kill Joseph here. And then they, his brothers took him and threw him in an empty well. And this is where he's crying out from the pit. That's kind of amazing. That Joseph is cast in a pit, and this pit is a well, an empty well, that now becomes full. Why? Because Joseph's in it. And I'm going to leave out a bunch because of the point that I want to get you to. What God wants to show us and wants us to see. I can be dropping a lot of revelation about what's happening here, but this is what God wants to show us today. He says, it says, um, And I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph, and Joseph went after his brethren, and he found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit. And we will say, some evil beast had devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben, the firstborn, heard it, and delivered him out of the hands, and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit, that is, in the wilderness, and lay no hands upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. So Reuben's plan was, look, don't kill him, cast him in a pit, and he's going to come back later and raise him up out of that pit and deliver him to the father. Right? And it came to pass when Joseph come unto his brethren that, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. Now remember, this is a picture of Christ. This coat is a coat of skins made up of different colors. This is where this whole picture that's being set up in Shechem, which is between the shoulders, which is the cross, all a picture of the cross, right? Here it is. He's coming. The Pharisees and Sadducees just, uh, conspired to kill him. Let's tear his heart off of him. Where? The place of the shoulders, the burden, the cross. This is where Joseph is coming. All a picture of Christ. And they said, And it came to pass when Joseph come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit. And the pit was empty, and there was no water in it. This is pretty amazing. Because this is the very spot that Jesus comes to and tells the woman at the well that if you are drawn of me, remember, Joseph was cast in a well in a pit. And then he was raised up out of the pit, remember? And sold into slavery. Watch this. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead. Now, this is pretty amazing, this little part right here, because the company of Ishmaelite, Ishmael, who is Ishmael? Remember? Abraham begat Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac was of the spirit. Ishmael was of the flesh, right? Jacob was of the spirit. Ishmael was of the flesh. Y'all with me? Right. So here it is. Joseph, who is a picture of Christ, which is the spirit. The brethren conspire together. They wanted to kill him, right? But what they do is they sell him out to the flesh. Ishmael means the flesh. So now you get, this, you get this battle between the spirit and the flesh. Wow. 
Same thing we're going through today. There's a battle. Either we're going to be sold out to the Spirit, or we're going to be sold out to the flesh. Now watch what they do. Because this story is an exact repeat of Christ in His life, and what He's come, and what He's done, and what you're going through. And He says... He says, And it came to pass, um, and they took Him and cast Him into a pit. And the pit was empty. Remember, Jesus was in an uh, uh, empty tomb. Right? A new empty tomb. Who was the tomb for? Who, 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 uh, who had the tomb made? Joseph. Here it is. Joseph being thrown into a tomb, a pit. Same thing. And there was no water in it. When Joseph was in it, Joseph represents Christ. Now the well is filled. Wow. That's why Jesus, who was a type of, a type of Christ, may he, Yahweh, add. Joseph's name means, may he, Yahweh, add. Add to what? Add to Christ. When he died and came up out of the pit, out of the ground, God added to him. You understand? That's why Joseph's name means, may he, Yahweh, add. When Christ came up out of the grave on the 17th, Joseph came out of the pit. He was 17. Watch this. He says, Now they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes. And they look, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites. That's the flesh. Ishmael's of the flesh. The Bible says, For he shall be a wild man. Ishmael means wild man. And his hand shall be against everyone. The war of the spirit and the flesh. Even when the two were being born in the womb, they struggled. Remember? The spirit and the flesh. What are you going to give in to? It says, And they sat down to eat bread, and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead. Now, Gilead. Wow. The balm of Gilead. Gilead. It's where they made the eye salve. Because the balm of Gilead is Jesus Christ. And when you can't see... Now, check this out. They're about... They're going to sell out Joseph, who was a type of Christ, to the flesh to those who are carrying eye balm or eye salve, right? Which is a type of Christ, a picture of Christ. And he says, it says, and, it came, and they came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. This is slavery. So here it is. Joseph is being sold out to the flesh, right? To the world, to the flesh, stripped of his remnant, being taken down to bondage and captivity, which is in Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our own brother, or conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. Let's sell him out to the flesh. And let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh. And his brethren, brethren was content. Then there passed by Midianite merchants, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph to Egypt. The Bible says, out of Egypt I've called my son. Remember? They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. 20 pieces of silver. Silver is redemption. And 20 is a number of the Word of God. Remember, God wrote His law. Ten Commandments. There was ten on this side, and there was ten on this side. That's twenty. Not twenty commandments. 
The Bible says the tables were written on the front and the back. Ten in this one, and the same ten written on this one. Why? Because you've got to establish everything by two witnesses. Two or three witnesses. So God was establishing something through Joseph. He was being sold out to the law, to the flesh, to bondage. And it was going to strip him of his flesh. And they sold him out to the Ishmaelites who were the carriers or coming from a place where they carried the balm of Gilead which actually heals the eyes. You're going to see how this ties in because the Lord has been speaking about, you know, I'm like, Lord, what's going on with the eyes? Last night, I don't even, I don't know how many bears when I got home at 10.30 at night uh, drilled holes out and started putting the eyes in and I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what is going on? What are you trying to show me? What are you trying to say to me? I want to take you to um, Balm. Let me just tell you this. Um, the Balm of Gilead was an aromatic gum for medical, for medical purposes. So it was for, the, it was for healing purposes, yes. The you know, frankincense is also a balm. So if you look, they brought balm and myrrh. That's right. And we talk about the similarities in the story. Wow, that's exactly right. The same thing they brought to Christ. That precious metal, silver. That's right. That's right. Wow, that's good. That's a good connection. So the frankincense and the myrrh and the, the silver that was there, you can also, it says they brought gold, frankincense and myrrh to Christ. But here it is, you're getting the same thing with Joseph when, he is, uh, when he's here. But this is what I wanted to show you. Watch this. So what I want to do, I brought you all the way here because I want to take you to this very place where everything is happening. That's in Shechem, where Joseph is cast into the pit. This is where the well is, where Christ comes and he ministers to the woman at the well, a Samaritan woman, and where he is revealing himself to her, right? So she's going to know what happened there. She's going to know what was going on there. This is the same place of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Same exact place. Watch this. So I want you to go. I'm going to go to, um, to 2 Kings chapter 6. In 2 Kings chapter 6, this is going to be the very same place where all this is happening. Watch this. This is pretty amazing. Because in 2 Kings chapter 6, it starts off with the story of Elisha. In the very same place. Now Elisha, here it is, Joseph is a picture of Christ. Right? He runs into a man that tells him where Dothan is with the wells, right, where they had went to. And this man that told him was Christ. And now we're picking up in the same area, same place, by a man's name who means Jesus, means Yeshua, means the Lord. And it's Elisha. Watch this. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us, too confined. Let us go, we pray thee, unto the Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. The fifty prophets asked Elisha, Let us go to the Jordan so that we can build a house at the Jordan. This is the same place where Jesus is baptized. And he says, And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So the 50 prophets, which is the Holy Spirit, number of the Spirit, Pentecost, Elisha goes with the Spirit, who is Jesus, to the Jordan, right? They go and build a house at the Jordan. This is where Jesus, the Holy Spirit, comes into Christ, into the house, where he's baptized at. And he says, So they went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down wood, but as one was felling a beam, the axe had fell into the water, and he cried, and said, Alas, Master, for it was Barud. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick, and cast it thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, Take it up to thee. 
and he put his hand and took it. Now the reason I read this part to you is because the story of Joseph, he was cast into a pit and then he was resurrected out of the pit. And it's amazing that the connection of Gilead, that this same place is bringing us right here to this very spot. And what we're seeing before we get to the well where Joseph was cast in, they give us this little seven verses of which speaks of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. John said that Jesus was the axe head, right? The axe head, you know, uh, come off the stick, it was buried, it did swim, it resurrected. So with the story of Joseph, we see the death, burial, and resurrection. And with the story of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection when he was baptized and on a cross between the shoulders. Are you still with me? Because all of these little things are fit in there for a purpose and a reason for you and me so we can see. Because if you can't see, you're blind. And I'm going to show you the importance of being able to see. Because if you don't know what it is that God's doing, well, you're going to go somewhere and do something and you're going to be killed. If you can't see, one who has not learned in the Word, the Bible says, cannot see afar off. You're blind. And a problem of the blind lead the blind. They say they can see, but they can't. This is the eye salve. This is the balm. And unless you're applying it to your eyes as you read, you're blind. Amen. I want to know what God's doing right now. How do I know what He's doing right now? How do I know what He's saying right now? How do I know where He's going right now? Well, I heard a little voice tell me to go to the corner. I heard a little voice tell me to go to the Word. Because when I'm not hearing, like Saul, not hearing from God, watch, on Mount Gilead, because he didn't hear from God in this same place, because Samuel, he didn't wait on the Lord. He didn't wait on Samuel coming him to give him the word on what to do. He decided to make a sacrifice for himself. Well, if I don't hear from him, well, then I'm just going to do it myself instead of being patient and waiting on God. And sure enough, him and his sons died on Mount Gilboa in the same place. Because he couldn't see afar off. And the ark was taken. Ichabod, the glory has departed. And that's why Jesus said, because you say you can see, your sin remains. But if you were blind, your sins would be forgiven you. You know why? Because they said they can see through the law. And the law is a shadow. And how would you like to go around where everything, everybody I've been talking to lately can't see? Oh my God. My wife having problems with her eyes. You see these little things. I go see a man whose his layers and his eyes were tearing. They said, if you don't have surgery like quick, you're going to be blind. They told my wife, if your eyes ain't taken care of, you're going to be blind. How many people are out there following the blind? <laughs> The only way I know if I'm right right now or am I wrong is by going to the eye bomb, the eye salve. I want to know what God was doing then so I know what to do now. I know they were struggling then. I know I'm going to be struggling now. But as long as I apply the eye bomb, wow! That was Paul's infirmity in his flesh. The thorn in his flesh to buffet him. Paul was more learned in the law than anybody. Thought he could see. But God said, no, you're blind. The serpent scales of the law was on his eyes. 
But now, watch this. Paul, for the first time, who was Saul, sees Jesus, the eye balm. And, and, and he says, go wait and have Ananias pray that the scales fall from your eyes. He was taken and shown things in heaven that are unspeakable. Wow. He could see. He tried to explain it to his brethren who were blind. But when God had Ananias lay hands on him, he didn't let his eyes totally restore. That's why he told in Galatians, the makers of the eye balm, if it were possible, you'd have gouged out your own eyes and given them to me. And he had to be led around by a physician named Luke. He had to have someone else write his letters. <laughs> <laughs> that's right he wrote big letters because he couldn't see like he used to that was his infirmity he prayed about oh no Paul you're going to be led around you thought you could see before but now I'm going to show you look I don't want to be blind I don't want to go someplace I'm not supposed to go. I don't want to do something I'm not supposed to be doing. I need to know where it is that God wants me to go and what He wants me to do. Lord, do you want me doing this right now? Trust me. You find out that last week's message and this week's message is going to go hand in hand. Because in order to lead a blind man, they have to trust you. And if the blind man doesn't trust you, you can't lead him. Because you can't lead a man that don't want to follow. And that man who's blind will tell you he can see. And he's lost as can be. And Joseph was walking around in the field. Right? Until all of a sudden, he ran into the eye salve. The eye balm. The one who heals the eyes. And he asks him. He's looking for direction. <laughs> Making sense now? Where's my brethren? <laughs> Where do I go? They in Dothan. Wow, because in Dothan is Gilead. In Dothan is where the eye salve is. In Dothan, the well is the same place he told the woman, the Samaritan woman, the one you're looking at is him. <gasps> Ooh, what? I'm the one. She said, we know when Messiah comes. I am He. The one you are looking at. At the well. Probably where Joseph was cast in. <laughs> when Jesus said, I have must needs to go unto Samaria. It's because he was a type of Joseph. And he had to go to that well. <laughs> Yeah, son. Wait, we ain't got to it yet. I'm going to show you the importance of seeing. I came here blinded, looking for my way. And when I don't know what to do, I stand. I ain't doing nothing until I hear from God. Well, this prophet over here said that I'm supposed to do this. I don't care what the prophet said. God, in the past, God who at sundry times and divers manners spoken to the fathers by the prophets, and he still does, but now speaks to us through the eye salve, the ointment, his word, and don't move until God tells you. Because if you step out, it could cost you your life, like Saul. You have to know it's God. I told my wife this morning, she was going set up over there to sell bears at Tractor Supply. Because, you know, I call bears for a living. I mean, anybody want a bear? <laughs> if that's not faith, I don't know what is. <laughs> it's all about bearing witness. Right? Oh yeah, I got to make a few thousand dollars a month to pay my bills. How? 
Down in the south where there's no bears. I'm carving bears, son, with a chainsaw. Anybody want one? There ain't a line out the door, but some kind of a way. Some kind of a way. I get this little order to carve out some lions. Huh. Think maybe you can carve me out a lion head? And the Lord says, make it nice. Make it, make it nice. I'm like lion of the tribe of Judah. Blessings and curses. It could be the lion of the tribe of Judah, or it could be the roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who? What lion are you following? Because if you remember, if we go back to where we was before, a couple of weeks ago, from that letter I read, that man of God did not listen to God when he told him to go in there and prophesy over that altar and said, don't stop, but leave. But an old prophet came to him and said, thus saith the Lord, come and stay with me and eat. And because he didn't seek counsel from God, he took what the old prophet had said. Oh, surely that man of God has been saved 50 years. And if God spoke to him, well, that's what God, you know, that's what God wants me to do. No! You stop. And you ask God. Yeah. Because guess what? Because he'd done that, a lion tore him to pieces. And because I was obedient... Making just these little lions, I got blessed over and beyond that covered me for the week. I'm, at the last minute, right, baby? Every time, every time, trusting in Him. I'm like, Lord, you know, you could fill a bank account if you want, you know? You could fill it up. I'll, man, I'll give it away. Fill it up. I'll give it away. No. I want you to trust me. Right. Can you trust him with nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Man, listen, man, I ain't even got to the good part yet. Man, watch this. So all of this is a picture of him. And if you want to know what God's doing and where he's going, you need the eye balm, you need the eye salve. When you sit down and you get in this eye salve, this is what gives you direction, instruction, and guidance. Am I supposed to be at this church? I asked the Lord that. <laughs> How you like that? <laughs> the pastor asked. Am I supposed to be at this church? Or am I supposed to go to another one? <laughs> you ever heard that from a pastor? Have you ever heard that from a pastor? No. Because I need to know if I'm supposed to be here or not. Amen. Because if I'm not, huh, what would happen if we don't give our fears to God? Huh. Boy, that's a question. What happens if we don't give our fears to God? We have to trust Him with everything. Amen. Trust Him for this church. Trust Him in the finances. I got to trust Him and know. Let me tell you something. I check myself all the time to see if I'm in the faith. Amen. Do you? Do you cry out to God and say, Lord, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Please show me. And I cry out for a sign. Let me know if I'm not in your will anymore, if I'm not on your path. Did I veer off? Because the Bible says if you veer to the right or to the left, it's easy to veer. Yeah. You have to stay on the path. Watch this.
Okay, intermission's over. We're back. <laughs> um, I just looked up the word pit while he was ministering in the Strongs, um, and it means a pit, a well, a cistern, a dungeon, a quarry, um, but it comes from the root word ba'ar, B-A-A-R, uh, Strong's Hebrew 874, and it means to make distinct or to make plain. And um, I was just thinking about what he said about the woman at the well in Samaria. She was at a place where Jesus was making it distinct or plain to her who he was. Right. And if you go back and we look at what I've been showing you guys is that if we go back to Joseph in the pit and being raised up, you know, and then you go back to, you know, uh, the axe head going down into the grave, the watery grave, that's baptism, death, and being raised up. We come to this place, Shechem, between the shoulders, the cross, and all of this, and the, the water's there, and he tells her about drawing from him and out of him. So, the place of the bomb and God revealing himself, you know, where he, chose, he had to go there to do this, to fulfill the scripture. Every place he went to was to fulfill the old covenant, right? So we could see it. So we know how to walk today. Let me get to where I was going. I'm almost done. This is the end. Watch this, how the progression of the word stays the same all the way through. It's always going to be about Jesus revealing to us things. Watch what he says. Right after we hear about um, the axe head in verse 7, taking it up, immediately you get this jump. And watch what he does here. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall we shall uh, be my camp. This is the king. I want you to listen. Because now, God will reveal to you what the enemy is going to do. Watch. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, So Elisha, Beware that thou pass not such a place. For there the, the Syrians are come down and will be waiting on you. Right? Therefore the heart of the king of Syria wait and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God had told him and warned him uh, warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice but many times so Elisha is now telling the king the, the Syrians are setting up places to kill you so listen to the word Elisha is given word. Elisha's name means Yeshua, means Jesus. Taking counsel from the word on what to do and where to go. Right? He says, Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was uh, sore troubled for this thing and called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us uh, is for the king of Israel? Which one of you is telling our plans here? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha, Yeshua, Jesus, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Joseph was an interpreter. Wow. Right? Pretty amazing. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may sin and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Wow! <laughs> Here we are again. Elisha, Yeshua, is in Dothan by the wells. Same place. Therefore sent he uh, thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city round about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto, Alas, my master! 
How uh, shall what what shall uh, what shall we do? And he answered Elisha and said, Fear not. Remember, this is the place of the balm. What? This is the place where Joseph was sold out for eye balm. Elisha's name means Jesus. Joseph is a picture of Christ. They buy the wells. This is the eye balm place. He says, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So Elisha's seeing something that his servant's not seeing. Right? Sometimes there's things in our life that God don't want to reveal to us as of yet. But remember, it's Elisha, the one that applies the eye balm on his servant. Watch what he says. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. This is the place of open eyes. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. The Bible says that Jesus is the leader of the host of the army of the Lord. Right? Watch this. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord. Watch. And said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the words of Elisha. Not only does our God have the power to restore our sight, but he can, he can make you blind too. Right? And he says, And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. <laughs> Watch this. You with me? Follow me. He's there for a reason. Jesus goes to this place for a reason. So Elisha, whose name means Jesus, is now saying, follow me. And he says, and Elisha said unto them, this is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. And he led them to Samaria. Why? Because Christ is the one that opens our eyes. He shows us the path that we need to walk down. He shows us, even though we don't understand it, even though we can't see, where the money's going to come from, or the provision, or how you're going to get through the next battle, or the next struggle. How are we going to do it? I don't know. I'm going to go call the bear. I told my wife today, she was going to sit out by, um, you know, out by uh, tractor supply to try to sell some bears. I told her last night, you know what? I just got a feeling you need to be in church in the morning. And she told me as well. And I even asked her, watch. I said, baby, what do you think about tomorrow? Should you go out there or should you come to church? You know, because you know we really need the money, right? So guess what? I felt in my spirit, this is where God... Now that might be an easy thing for, oh yeah, it's really quite, e quite simple. You need to be in church. That's really... You know, okay, I understand. That might be like an easy thing for you or whatever. You know, we need to just be in church and, or whatever it is. But let me tell you something. When you're obedient, when you're obedient, I came and sat down in here. Watch this. And because of obedience, a man walks up to me. Now I'm going to track the supply to hope to sell some bears, to buy groceries. And a man walks up to me and said, God told me to give you this, $250. Wow. Obedience pays off. 
Now I ain't got to sell no bears. I just got to trust him. That's it. Pretty crazy, huh? And here it is. I, it's kind of crazy. In two days, I sold two little plaques for seven hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> how do you how do you carve two little plaques and the next day end up with seven hundred and fifty dollars? How do you do that? Stretch your face. Stretch it. Only Jesus. It's only by His grace, following Him and being obedient to Him. Man, it's like, wow. And He gives it to you when you need it. My wife told me, you know, you know we need a, a certain amount of money so we can put it in the bank to cover the bills. And I'm... It's hard, man. It is hard. The walk with Christ and trusting and believing is not easy. It's not an easy walk by no means. Now, if some of you are set and you all getting big incomes coming in every month, and that's nice and all that kind of stuff, and may the Lord bless you, and you could bless, and we could pay the bills and all that kind of stuff. But let me tell you something. When you choose to walk with the Lord, I mean, it's a hard walk. they got people that's been in here a long time that'll tell you that has been serving the Lord a long time. Listen, you got the mountains, and then you got the valleys, yeah. and then you got the pits. <laughs> Come on! out of that boy <laughs> right and look when the water starts dumping on you in the pit swim <laughs> and if they ain't throwing water on you they throwing mud pack it <laughs> as they throw it on you until you come up out the top because as long as you keep stomping the dirt they can't cover you they can't bury you the only thing that'll happen is you'll be raised up in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's what my message is to you guys. Though you can't see it, I pray that God will open your eyes through the eye balm, through the eye salve. And let me tell you something. Not only was he showing me the eyes, but he was telling me 17. Joseph was 17. 17. Aunt Goldie, 17. It was over and over. Why? Because God's got a word for you. He's fixing to raise you up. Amen. God is raising you up. So be encouraged. Yes. I want, I want to say something just to, to show you how in season you are. Come on. Give me the seasoning. I was, now, over the past week, past week, uh, early, early this week, I finished watching uh, uh, a YouTube video with Ken Ham and Bill Nye. They both signed this. One's a Christian, one's not. They were doing a, a debate. Come right here. Uh, come right here. Then we get this yeah. on the thing. On, Start all over again. All right. Because, yeah, we have to have a witness. <laughs> Uh, the past week I was watching a, a YouTube video, it was a debate between Bill Nye and Ken Ham. One's an atheist and one's a Christian, okay, and they were debating two and a half hours, so I, I, bro I broke it up into watching it, you know, and I, every time I look at Bill Nye and what Ken Ham's saying, I said, why don't you see it? And finally when it was all over, I'm asking God, you know, why doesn't he see it, you know? I mean, he's just looking with these eyes, but he's not looking... With, with spiritual eyes, you know? And uh, the Lord really spoke to me. And he said, you know, he's not looking with the eyes of his faith. And the reason he don't have that faith is because he has not asked for it. Wow. You know, because you, it, you, it, the Bible says you, you have not because you ask not. You have to ask for it. So, you know, um, just thank you. eyes, eyes of your faith. Thank you, thank you. Watch this. <laughs> got one scripture for you. I'm going to end with this one. It's Jeremiah uh, 8.22. It says, Jeremiah says, and this is Jeremiah lamenting over Judah, crying out for Judah. And he says, Is there no balm in Gilead? Question mark. This is Israel, man. This is Judah. They do in Judah. The lion of the tribe of Judah. There is balm in Gilead. Yes, it is. It's hard to walk not seeing sometimes just, you know, Lord. He says, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? I think the balm of Gilead is Jesus. And I think the Bible also says that Jesus, Yeshua, is the great physician. Yes, he 
is of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And what does God have me make this week? My God. Lions. Wow. Is there not balm in Gilead? All we have to do is ask for the eye salve so that we could see. And let me tell you something. Jesus said, learn from the woman who pestered the judge. Yeah. 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 Keep crying until you see. Remember they tried to silence the blind men. Oh son of David. Blind Bartimaeus. Oh son of David. Oh son of David. Have mercy on me. Shut up. But he cried the louder. What is it that you want? The balm of Gilead is here. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man. Father, help us, Lord. Yes. Yes. Help us all, Lord. Lord. We're struggling, Father. It's hard, Lord. Lord, I pray for the people that are here. I pray for Nick, Lord. Yes. That you would reach out and touch him and refresh him. Come here, Nick. Yes. 